A continuación presentamos el devocional diario por el pastor José Manuel Sierra y traducido al inglés. En español se emite de lunes a viernes a las 9 horas en las Islas Canarias y queda grabado en nuestros canales de Facebook y YouTube. Debajo en la descripción de este vídeo encontrará el enlace para los devocionales en español. Good morning, my dear brethren and friends. We're going to be going to 2 Timothy, specifically chapter 3, as of verse 12. The word of the Lord says the following. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Once again we find ourselves the Apostle Paul giving wise counsel, direction, to young pastor Timothy. It was not easy to occupy his place after years as a head of the church in Ephesus, but Timothy needed a lot of help, a lot of instructions, a lot of counseling. And that is what Paul did when he was absent from the church. Not to lose contact with Timothy so that he will know at all times not only how he had to pastor and shepherd the church, the congregation, but also how he had to take care of his own life, of himself, so that the occupations of the ministry did not end up killing him. Here, the Apostle Paul is telling Timothy that he should not stray from the Scriptures, that he has to stick to the Word of God, because through the Word, He's going to be able to know at all times and he will be able to verify what he has to do and what he doesn't have to do. To what people he has to put in front line as deacons, as workers, and what people he does not have to use. Paul knew perfectly well that in the moment that a person decides to take seriously their fellowship, their relationship with the Lord, One way or another, he's going to suffer persecution. If you want to put your marriage in order, some will not agree, and they will tell you that it's not necessary that you take that step, that in the end you are married and you have already been living with that men or women for many years, and even you have children, and who knows if you have grandchildren, so you will find people that it's not necessary that you will put your private life in order. If you want to give testimony of your faith to other people, which what Christ has done in your life, then some people have said that you're a fanatic, a robot, and you don't have to talk so much and bother so much with your religious and spiritual things. If you want to apologize people that you have offended, some people will say that do not humble yourself, do not humiliate, don't be silly. You don't have to do that. That you're going to make yourself be valued or respected. And whatever you do, you're always going to suffer some kind of persecution of criticism or, the, or, or pressure. Especially by those people who probably will tell others what they have to do, but they themselves do not want to put their life in line with the Lord. My dear brethren, we definitely, who we have to please is not men. Well, who we have to please, and we have said it many times, and I believe that at this point in time, we have very clear, is to our God. If you truly love God, you have to show it, not with words, but with your deeds, your actions, showing God that you truly are serious, that you're truly willing to forgive, to return what you stole, that you're willing to restore a relationship that has been broken in the past for pride, for arrogance, or for whatever reason, that you're willing to obey God, to submit to Him and His Word. 
and to go from what is necessary to go. And if one has to be criticized, questioned, persecuted, or whatever else, the Lord is going to give us the grace and the strength to put into practice all the days of our life His own word. What is very clear is that cowards well, are not the ideal people to put in practice the gospel. People who in the bottom of their heart do not want to renounce their will, believing that the will of God is worse than theirs, well, obviously they will have no future and, of course, no present in the Lord. In the Lord, what has to be clear is perseverance, seriousness, holiness, order, obedience, and then, and only then, you will be able to begin and experience the blessing and the support of God in your life. And I'm not saying that everything is going to be fine, but what I'm saying is that you will never feel alone, never you will feel uh, alone, because the presence of God is with you, even if you have everybody against you. But in the depths of your heart, you're convinced that this is all happening because you want to please God. So sometimes there is a price to pay, and I'm not talking about a, a price to, to obtain a blessing or a, or a financial price to obtain a favor from God. The favors of God and the mercies of God are free, and we don't have to pay for the services rendered, and even less by our God. It is by faith that we walk, and not by our economic power or by our influence in the ministry. But I do say we have to pay a price to have to endure criticism and pressure. And that is why the maturity of a person is demonstrated. You don't, we don't have to assume that you are mature. You have to show it with your actions and your words, with what you do every day, how you relate with others, what are your priorities, how the Lord is the first in your life and not one more thing, that you're not only a person that attends a service, once a week to fulfill and your obligation and to be in happy within yourself or your family. But your relationship with God goes far beyond attending that service or listening to a word every time in time. Our communion with God sometimes entails to have to go against the, the current, even with our family, with your co-workers, with your friends. But the Lord will always be by your side supporting and blessing you in everything you do if you do it for his honor and his glory. Not to attract attention, not to be the protagonist of what you're doing, but to give honor and glory to God and to take advantage of any opportunity that is presented to you to say, the Lord my God has changed my life and what I want is to please him, honor him and serve him. And if I have to renounce to something that maybe my flesh would like to do because of the God of love, I am willing to do it because I know that God has the best for my life. So don't doubt at any time, at any moment of your life that the Lord wants the best for you. Do not give way to those negative thoughts of saying, well, what I'm doing is worthless. Wanting to live a, an orderly life, an holy life in front of God is not worth at all. Well, it is worthy. But on the other hand, we don't do things to be seen or so that God will reward us. But we do the things because we love Him. And the love of God has to be the engine that moves our lives to do what we do, to say what we say, or to not say of things that we know because of the word of God, that we know it, that do not please the Lord. Paul is telling Timothy, persist in what you have learned. In other words, hold on to the scriptures that from you, the, your childhood you have known them and that is going to strengthen your faith and that will guide your life and that will give you the wisdom that is necessary and the essential knowledge to be able to be a good minister of Christ. So, my dear brethren and friends, today once again we're making an emphasis in the reading and exhaustive study of the Word of God because it is through the Word of God that we can maintain firm in the faith and we can know our God, honor and serve Him how He wants it. And also, to conclude, 
we have a great advantage. And that is that we only not only know the Word of God, but above all things, and most important, is that we know the God of the Word that we read and study every day. And with this combination, His Word and His presence in our, in our lives, we're going to be approaching Him with thanksgiving this morning in prayer, giving Him all the honor and glory, and asking Him that He will be with us and He will help us in all the decisions and all the things that we have to do today for Him. Let's pray, my dear brethren. Blessed Heavenly Father, thank you this morning because you allow us to start a new day with you, which is a privilege. Thank you, O oh God, because you are blessing us, you are guiding us, you are shepherding us, and, and thanks to you we can have this peace, that joy, and this freedom that cost you so much to obtain for us on that cross. Thank you for your victory, which is my victory. Thank you because your presence loves, your presence lives in my life and I am more than conqueror. Help me to put in order my life. Help me to be a person that is orderly in my life, that you will be the center of my life and that everything turns around you. Thank you, my Lord, for your mercy and your love in my life. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Glory to God. My dear brethren, there is, left, there is less time left for our event in Guatemala City. We have published once again this morning the telephone numbers and the contact information, the dates, the places, so that everybody from our virtual church and brethren from another uh, friends that we would like to visit us, we will be there. I know that they will be coming from another countries, Chile, Costa Rica, United States, and maybe uh, brethren that live around Guatemala will make an effort to be together in our event in Guatemala City. Let's continue praying so that all the organization and all the details will go well and that we will have a day full of blessing and that we can enjoy together this uh, stay in that country. May the Lord bless you, my dear brethren, and as always, I give thanks to all of uh, you that who pray for us, that support us every day, and we continue ahead. Today, we will be having the service from the city of Santa Cruz de Tenerife, of Centro Evangelico Vida Nueva, and from there, we will be pending on what the Lord is going to be speaking to us through His beautiful Word. May the Lord bless you, my dear brethren, And may you have a day full of the peace and the blessing of our God.